Welcome back, people of the Most High God, Jesus Christ. Today, we're gonna do we're gonna do a Bible study on on aliens and UFOs. So, does the Bible prophesy that there will be a, a alien invasion on this earth? And the answer is yes. We can uh, we can go to Revelations and see the foundation for this. So we're gonna go to we're going Revelations. We're gonna start off in Revelations twelve verse seven. Revelations twelve seven. It says, "And there was war in heaven." Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, which is the devil, and the dragon fought, and the dragon fought in his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven for them. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And it says, and I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accusers of our brethren is cast down, which accuses them before our God day and night. Then we skip down and it says, at verse 12 it says, Revelation 12, 12 it says, Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you having great wrath, because he knows his time is short. Right? So, so what does this mean, right? This is telling you that at, there's going to be a point in time that the devil is going to get kicked out of his place in heaven, right? Which, which some people don't understand that the this is going to be the devil's second time. The first time he got kicked out of the place where God dwells, his his part of heaven, which I'll be giving an example of that. This time he will be getting kicked out of the outer space area of heaven, right? He will be getting kicked out of the outer space area of heaven. So if we go to we go to 2 Corinthians 12, 2. 2 Corinthians 12, 2. It explains the levels of heaven. If I can just get the 2 Corinthians. I like to go live so y'all can know that I'm reading straight out the Bible. We don't even got no notes yet. 2 Corinthians 12, 2. 2 Corinthians 12. All right. It says, I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago, whether in the body I could not tell, or whether out of the body I could not tell. God knoweth. This is uh, Paul the Apostle speaking. Such as one, such as one was caught up into the third heaven, right? So, so when Paul speaks of the third heaven, he's speaking of the place where God Almighty dwells at, right? But if there's three heavens, then you know there has to be a one and a, a first and a second, right? So the first heaven, the first heaven is this, 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 uh, our atmosphere on Earth, right? The second heaven is is space is space all the way up to where God dwells at, which is the third heaven, right? So actual scientific evidence for this is the fact that when you when, when you leave this earth atmosphere, time starts to change, right? Now as they continue to go off into further and further and explore space. You're going to start hearing about interstellar space, right? Interstellar space is beyond is is a is a is a is a part of space where it's it's 
it, I actually, it, 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 can, it, it can only be measured in light years, right? Interstellar space is measured in light years, and it is a, it is a, it, the time moves differently, right? The third heaven where God dwells at is eternity. Time does not move at all in that space. But then you got be, below that, right, where Satan is at now, right, because he, he got cast out of when, when uh, the, the, in the, the very beginning, he got, he got cast out of the third heaven. But before the return of, of Jesus Christ, he will get cast out of the second heaven, which is in outer space. Then that's when you will see actual UFOs and aliens showing up on this planet. So we're gonna we're gonna watch some uh some uh some news clips or whatever. First one we're gonna we're gonna watch this uh them them talking about uh aliens on the news. Our story begins at birth. Oh, this comes from the man who headed Israel's space security program for nearly 30 years, Chaim Eshed, is making the extraordinary claim that the United States and Israel have been in contact with a group of aliens for years, not immigrants, but extraterrestrials. He has called them the Galactic Federation of Aliens, and he says President Trump is aware of the existence of these aliens and had been on the verge of revealing their secrets, he claims but was asked not to do so by the Federation in order to prevent what he calls mass hysteria. Well, the retired general said the U.S. and Israel have kept it from the public because, quote, humanity isn't ready and the aliens don't want to reveal themselves until humanity can evolve, he says, and understand what space really is. Well, the good news is that he... Okay, now, you heard that, right? He said, he said to humanity so-called evolves, right, and understands what space really is, right? That's one, That's why when you, you go back to what I just explained when I talked about how in space time moves differently, right? There, there are things in space that human beings can never understand. There are structures in space uh, that human beings are just now discovering. There, humans are just now discovering that black holes don't work the way that we thought they did, right? So, when he says this this uh, thing about they're waiting for humans to evolve, they're basically waiting for people to come into the uh, the a higher technology and knowledge to understand what what uh, space is, right? So. Oh, yeah. So I, I I I show you this I show you this to uh, legitimize what I'm saying, right? Whether you want to believe the Bible's interpretation of it is up to you. But it's it's plenty of evidence that that this is the proper interpretation of what's uh, about to happen on this planet. So where are we going next? Alright, so let's go to let's go to the book of Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes 1 9. This is this is the foundation for uh for why Christians should understand this this topic on alien on the alien invasion. So Ecclesiastes 1 9. Ecclesiastes 1 9 says Ecclesiastes 1 9 says the thing the thing that hath been it is which shall be and that which is done is that which shall be done and there is no new thing under the sun right it says there is it says basically it's basically it's saying what happened in the beginning is going to happen in the end right it's saying that history repeats itself, right? So, let's see what does the Bible claim happened in the beginning that is going to repeat itself in the end. Let's see. What does the Bible say that happened in the beginning? Go 
Go to Genesis 6. Genesis 6. It says, it says, And it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw that the, their daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives, all of which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years, right? That's God. He basically said that because of the activities that were going on at that time, man would be would be cursed later on in the future to basically not make it past 120 years of life. Which that's pretty much what we see. I mean, the, the person who who lived, whoever might live the longest, they don't make it. They don't make it further than 120. They barely make it past 100. But yeah. So, so what what was going on during those times? Where it started off, it started off with uh, with an alien invasion, right? The alien invasion, because when you think of the term alien, right? In the Bible, it's really just uh, uh it's always used as a term as something strange, right? Uh, something that's not. Something that's not uh, familiar, right? So let's go to let's go to second. Let's go to uh, First Corinthians verses fifteen. Uh, First Corinthians chapter fifteen, verse thirty-nine. I'm probably all over the place with this. First Corinthians. 15 verse 39 all right it says it says all flesh is not the same flesh but there is one kind of flesh but there is one kind of flesh uh, flesh of men another flesh of beasts Another flesh of birds. Feel themselves. Go back. Anyway, it says, it says, all flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh. One a flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another flesh of fishes, and another flesh of birds. Now pay close, pay close attention to this part. It says there are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial, but the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the celestial, no, but the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. Right. So think about this. Right. The Bible uses this term terrestrial. Right. Terrestrial. When it, it, it says that there is one type of Flesh, the differentiates between terrestrial flesh and celestial flesh, right? Right? Terrestrial is earthbound, of, of made from the elements of the earth, right? Celestial flesh is heavenly, right? Made not from made not from this this earthly material, right? When you look at when you look at the human body, it has all the minerals of the earth in it, right? So if you think about this, right, it, it says it says terrestrial bodies and celestial bodies, right? But if a but if a being was once a celestial body and then they fall from their place, they don't become terrestrial body, they become an extraterrestrial. You see, right? It's all it's all hidden in the context and only only the Holy Spirit or you know the knowledge of God can reveal these interpretations that's hidden in the scriptures. So, yeah, so look. So it says, 
So, so let's get into let's get into what what exactly are these are these uh went on during the times of Noah's flood, right? During those times, which was called the uh, they called the called the pre diluvian eras, right? The pre diluvian era. It was a time where basically the uh, the the angels they the fallen they they the fallen angels they they came down and they and they basically they chose wives and they manipulated the DNA of animals and uh and, and humans, right? This is where you get the uh all the uh mythological creatures because they're hybrids, right? Like uh like like the Medusas and the uh the Minotaurs, right? They're they're mixtures, they're mixtures of uh of angels in in uh earthly animals, right? By the way, it's gonna be it's gonna be a uh it's not gonna be the first study this because for somebody to even understand stuff it's gonna take multiple uh multiple studies. Alright, what up? How do I get back to my stuff? Get, get, that. get off my screen. All right. Where was we at? Okay. We're humans, just like you. We are mothers and fathers. We're sisters and brothers. Our goal is to always help you travel better, safer, and faster. Mount Hermon. Lebanon. Straddling the border of Syria, this legendary mountain, as described in the Book of Enoch, is the peak where Shemyaza and the Watchers descended to Earth. So th this, in the this Book of Enoch, there's a reference to Mount Hermon. Hold on. We see the angels basically descending. I gotta explain this to you. So you see, heard him mention the Book of Enoch, right? Which the Bible also mentions the Book of Enoch, but the, the Book of Enoch was was taken out by the uh, Council of, of Nicaea because see that that's what people get confused. It's not that the Bible has been altered; it's things that have been taken out of it, you know, because because they didn't want certain people to know certain knowledge. But the Book of Enoch was taken out of the Bible by the uh, Catholic Church. And it's, it, it, it goes into further detail on exactly what happened uh, during those times of Noah's flood. Mount Hermon. So Mount Hermon was both a place of connection with heaven and kind of a sally port between earth and heaven. The watchers being angels from heaven knew the sciences of heaven. Semyaza was basically an expert in enchantment and root cutting. You could think of it as basically witchcraft, uh, the casting of spells, creating magic, and using roots to create potions. The Book of Enoch lists very specifically the subjects that are taught to humans by the Watchers, by these angels who begin to share their wisdom with them. The Book of Enoch describes Mount Hermon as the place where Shemyaza taught humans about magic and medicine. Other powerful angels passed on knowledge of metallurgy, weapons, astrology, science, and even warfare. The Watchers delivered to humanity the forbidden knowledge of God. All the stories in ancient cultures, cross-cultural, had these tales of beings that would deliver the, the forbidden knowledge of the gods to humans, and they were all condemned for it. The Watchers through Shemyaza give us extraordinary tools which make our lives Alright, look. Before we go further, I just want because people don't know this. People don't realize that the Book of Enoch is actually mentioned in the Bible, but it got taken out by uh, the Catholic Church. What was it? See? Hang on.
Yeah, by faith. I can see that. Alright. Alright, so my whole point is during those times, during those times, the human human species was uh they had their DNA had been manipulated and they were ruled over by by ancient deities, right? If you uh even if you look at if you go if you go study the uh the history like of, of Mayans, right, in the in the in the guys that they believed in, you will see that most of them are, are uh serpent creatures, right? Most of them are serpent creatures, which takes you back to the uh the devil being being a serpent, right? These the cultures this the time of the flood of Noah's flood was called the uh, it's called the pre diluvian period right and there is plenty of evidence to show that there was an actual flood that happened right if you can believe that that a comet can come out can wipe out you know uh, dinosaurs right it shouldn't be too far fetched that a, that a natural disaster like a flood is possible right so. So yeah, so basically they 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 came down, they manipulated everybody's DNA, everybody was nobody was everybody was mutants except for except for Noah and his sons and their wives, right? And then the this this is this is this is where all of the world's religions get gets their gets their uh beliefs from during these times, right? And then after those times, they they basically were were uh, making a uh, everything after those times. They were basically they were they were they were building what they 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 started building what they the off the knowledge that they learned from those times. That's why when you when you go and see Egypt, you see you see images of the beings that were alive during those times. That's why you see like Anubis is like a dog half human person, right? Cause cause because of what they did, how they mixed the how they played with the DNA of animals and, and splicing and mixing humans and animals together and doing all that weird stuff. This is why this is why Jesus said before I come it's gonna be the same way before I come back. That's why now you see them playing with people's DNA. You see them making chimeric animals in uh in labs, you know what I'm saying, trying to trying to mix humans and, and monkeys together, things like this. This is this is just a uh this is just a uh a display of, of the of the entities that are, are, are leading these people, right? So I'm not exactly sure how this uh how this went, but I'm gonna have to go over and watch it again. But this is gonna be uh one of many um, um one of many teachings to bring you into the understanding that the Bible speaks on aliens and that it does and it teaches about a uh an alien invasion before the return of Jesus Christ. So be blessed in Jesus' name.